the identification of low versus high risk AML, I think speaks to the point I was just mentioning of, of really the, the pivotal and critical process of risk stratifying patients at diagnosis. And, and this now takes a comprehensive molecular approach. So we need to see the morphology of the bone marrow. We need to see the cytogenetics as well to understand the karyotype of the patient. And then we need to see those molecular genetics. And typically both the NCCN guidelines here in the United States, as well as the ELN guidelines over uh, in Europe can have stratified patients into good risk AML, intermediate risk AML, or adverse risk AML. And within these three groups, we know that certain mutations will um, impart a certain prognosis. Typically, when we think about good risk AML, we're thinking about patients with uh, cytogenetic abnormalities known as the core binding factor, um, translocations, this is translocation 821 in version 16, biallelic CEBPA mutations, or NPM1 mutations without a FLT3 ITD mutation um, with a low allelic ratio. Or, or a mutation with a with a uh, NPM1 mutation with a low FLT3 ITD allelic ratio. The intermediate risk group is the most heterogeneous. It has several different um, cytogenetic abnormalities as well as molecular markers that go in there. And then when we think about the adverse risk patients, these are really patients with complex karyotypes. So karyotypes that have more than three abnormalities. Um, patients with abnormalities in chromosomes five and seven, or patients that have mutations in FLT3 ITD without NPM1 mutations in a high allelic ratio, um, or mutations in RUNX1, ASXL1, or TP53. And so this is how, when we approach a newly diagnosed AML patient, we think about a molecular risk stratification for them. It's also important to note, though, that there is a clinical risk associated with leukemia. So any patient with relapsed AML is of course considered high risk as are patients with secondary AML and secondary AML is a class of um, patients that have had a prior history of a malignancy from which an a, uh, acute myeloid leukemia evolved from. So we usually think of this as an antecedent hematologic disorder. This can be things like myelodysplastic syndrome that evolves into AML, myeloproliferative neoplasms that evolve into AML amongst other conditions. And then finally, I think an area that is um, evolving as well as their, their true risk is patients that with that have what we call therapy related AML, which is historically thought of as a high risk patient population. So these are patients that have received treatment for maybe an alternative oncologic diagnosis. So maybe a solid tumor malignancy, breast cancer, colon cancer, something of that nature or radiation. And then over time have developed a leukemia from this. These are classically thought of as high risk patients as well.